Anything else? Mr. Goldman? Not at this time. All right. Uh, Mr. Tisdall? Just make one comment to that. We, you know, we we can't do an abatement action on every building in this town that needs it at one time. We have to take it that as we as our forces allow us to, as our manpower allows us to take it, as we have time on the council to work on this, and uh, uh, the reasonable amount of uh, uh, accuracy that we are able to get. Uh, this is not the last abatement action that will be taken by this city council. This is the first one under this new code. Uh, but uh, there are other buildings that need need addressing, as you pointed out, Mr. Tisdall, and, and in time they will be. But uh, we're doing what we can right now. Do you mind if I follow up? Pardon me? Do you mind if I follow up with one more comment? Sure. Prior to this new abatement law coming in, I have got numerous always took care of and this new effect the law was proposed. I asked the city of Andalusia, and I believe this came from, answer came from Mr. Wiggins, that the only two buildings that I had a real issue with were the James store and the Tiger Bay. And I heard contractors full crew men and dump trucks and did demolition for about eight weeks straight. In fact, that's where the building material is that you're going to talk about later on another property came from. I was doing work asked by the city of Andalusia without any direction on the bank floor. Now, when I finished that, I sent you an email, and I've got a copy of it, where I asked you, okay, I've now done my part, how about the city fixing these storm sewers that had been a major disaster, all the way back to when Mr. Mount was the mayor of the council month with Daniel Perry, at which they agreed to fix it. Now, that's 35 years, and you've done nothing. Nobody can this <coughs> one mayor since John McClellan has done one thing, they've taken these storm sewers out of the budget from the square was redone. And uh, I know for a fact that that happened because I was on the front page with Paul Armstrong debating that. Now he could just take it. But that's one of the problems with these buildings. You cannot build and rebuild a building over an open city storm sewer. Okay. By, and by the way, when I sent you that message, I got another, I got I did get a debate with four of them, I think it was within about five days. Uh, let me let me ask uh, Mr. Wiggins. Does anything that's related to uh, the building that we're talking about now, uh, two two hundred one South Three Nut Street, have to do with with storm storm water issues? No. Okay. All right. Anybody from the public wish to make a comment uh, one way or the other about this building? I would, Your Honor. Walter Boyd, Dr. Dunson. Uh, I just appreciate the education that I've been here, but 
But I want Mr. Goldman to mention the blinding effect. I just was interested in what, how does that play into this audience and what, what how do you, uh, are you making a determination based on the fact of blinding effect? Because you, you mentioned that term. I mean, Mayor, that's my, I'm not trying to. Yes, that, that's no problem. Uh, describe for him, if you will, uh, Mr. Goldman, what what do you mean by blighting effect, how it comes about, and what is the impact on the community uh, to other property owners? I'd be, I'd be happy to. And in this case, when I use the word blight, I, m I mean it by its dictionary definition. And there are actually two alternative forms. The first is a, um, is, refers to that part which you can see. Um, it's it's a, 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 a dilapidated condition. But there's an alternative definition of the word blight, and that is something that frustrates plans or hopes. And I believe that that is very much um, a, an important part of this process. And I'm not asking you to rest your decision on that at all, but merely that you weigh it in, as, as a part of this. Because it is my belief and that the reason why I go from one end of the state to the other talking about dangerous buildings is because I understand the effect that they can have on communities, that they have on neighborhoods, that they have on downtowns, not just in Andalusia, but in every state or in every city across the state. And I believe it is an important part of the stewardship of elected officials to do what they have the power to do on behalf of their cities to make sure that they are safe places to live, that they are productive and contributing areas. And it is not just that which you see, but also that which is absent. And I believe very much that an important part of the problem is not just, not just what you see with your eyes when you pass by, but the people who once occupied that building and the people it, it, is, it is an absence from this community. It is something that could be put to more productive use um, if prepared. And I hope, I hope the property owner will do that before the time for appeal runs. There's still another 20 days before the council would take action. Um, we are always hopeful that the city does not have to be the ones to take those actions. We consider it a matter of last resort, but that's where we are tonight and if we had another plan before us I would offer it to you um, but that that is that is what I mean when I when I say blight it, it is both both that which you can see and that which has an effect on the surrounding community and frankly vacant structures um, as this one uh, we believe was treated can cause all sorts of problems for neighborhood safety um, they can contribute to vermin, pestilence, um, in and out of the buildings, uh, particularly when they've been left open. In this case, um, not properly boarded back up, as you've heard. We don't believe it's a solution that will be lasting for any meaningful amount of time. Um, so all of those things combined together, I think, put it fairly in your purview to decide whether this property um, and its all the combined findings of the officials that are there before you constitute a nuisance, not just any one factor. So the blighting issue is a make-weight argument. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't. As we refer to it in the law, it is a make-weight argument. It just doesn't carry the question on itself, but it makes weight for the final result. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, <clears throat> we will close. Anyone else from the general public? We will close the public hearing portion of this and uh, take up the recommendation, uh, members of the council, the recommendation is that the matters that were contained in the list pendings that was filed against uh, in this property, 201 South Three Knot Street, uh, are still correct, that in the opinion of, of the authority, uh, the building is unsafe and is a public nuisance and in need of repair. And, uh, that your motion would cover those items. Mayor, I make a motion to find the property unsafe and a public nuisance 
and accept the findings of the city official. All right, we have a second. Second. And just to just to clarify on the that on when it's accepting the findings, that's the findings and the recommendation of repair. Yes, yes. I think that is it. Yes. Okay, any, anything, we have a motion and a second. Uh, anything further from the council, any comments? I would like to just take up where you left off about there still being time to work, the property owner to work with the city to, uh, to get an agreement to fix this and something that we could live with, but uh, the time is, is fleeting. So uh, with that having been said, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you for that. All right, uh, next item is uh, 254 Historic Central Street. Uh, we will uh, ask, is there any, uh, is the owner or anyone interested in that property uh, present here tonight? Mr. Tisdale, okay. All right, Anybody, anyone else? Okay, anybody from the public who's interested in this matter? I don't, well, I, we take that up later, don't we? Yeah, never mind. I got that out of, out of, spa, out of, out of its space there. Okay, uh, Mr. Goldman, you will uh, move forward on the, fine, on the uh, 254 Historic Central Street. Okay, a again, you've been presented with the list pendants for this property that contains findings of the appropriate municipal official with the affidavit of publication with photographs of the property. You've also been presented with a report um, with the recommendations of the building official. Um, this, this particular property, um, and you'll see, see it there, um, which faces historic Central Street, has, is behind the depot, uh, and although it, it, in trying to understand the layout, this particular property contains four separate buildings. Um, and as you'll hear this evening, it's the recommendation of, of the appropriate municipal official that those be demolished and the uh, premises as a part of the demolition um, cleaned up. And we'll go through that in more detail in just a moment. Um, but you have that recommendation in front of you um, explaining that process for the for demolition and cleanup. Um, you also um, have, again, just to remind you, uh, Mr. Tisdale's email of today, photographs that he's offered and um, letters that he has offered in the past. And so I wanted to make sure that those were submitted on his behalf. Um, and I'll call, go ahead and call up Andy Wiggins um, to take us through the photographs of 254 Historic Central Street. If you look on the bottom left, this is structure number one of exhibit A. Uh, if you look at the bottom half of the roof, you see the roof has collapsed in on that structure. Uh, and if you look over to the top right, you will see the cracking in the building and basically um, the header around the door is collapsing because of the the little archway there. Uh, the wood up underneath it is rotting away. Uh, if you look, this is structure number two. Uh, has no roof. Uh, basically, the building is deteriorating and has a tremendous amount of vegetation in the middle of it. And you, as you can see in the top right picture, uh, basically all over the interior of the, all over the interior of the structure. It has no floor in it, uh, no, it's just the hull of a building. Uh, as you can see the bottom left picture there, you see where, you know, the brick are coming loose from the building, both 
around the bottom of the old loading dock there, or and to the right there past the window, you see that's coming loose also. And if you look at, this is structure number three that is there. If you can see the roof, it has a ripple wave effect, the bottom left of your screen. Uh, it's just a matter of time before that gives away. You can see that on the far right, vegetation has already came through the roof and has begun to accumulate and grow on top of the building. Uh, if you look at the top right, you can see where the brick are deteriorating and basically uh, falling off the building. Uh, is, we don't have a picture, but I think down below you can see where some of the brick have deteriorated or they fell in, in, into pieces uh, from, the, from the wall. If you look at exhibit A here on structure number four, uh, you can see that this is partial walls of buildings. If you look at the top right, you see the cracking and uh, so forth in the building wall there. That, And then if you look on the top or bottom left, I'm sorry, bottom left, you'll see all the vegetation growing around the walls and you can see how they're kind of bowed out and so forth. Uh, Exhibit B is on the same piece of property. If you look at the top left of your screen, uh, this is all structural debris that was taken from another location and uh, stockpiled, whatever the verbiage is, onto the property. Uh, the bottom right picture, you can see the same debris extending along. You also see the old rail cars uh, which we consider to be an attractive nuisance. I mean, they've been shown on the internet and other things. Uh, they need to be secured. Explain, explain what you mean by shown on the internet. Uh, the, the rail cars, there's a, a, a website of like trains and so forth, and uh, someone had went out on the property and had taken pictures of the train cars and posted them on the internet. Uh, on, a, on the World Wide Web. And, 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 and on that, did they tell people how to go and find those train cars and tell them to go to the site? Correct, that they were located in Andalusia at the old depot. Again, there's more debris. It's top left shows more debris. The bottom left shows that all out in the area, there's different types of metal and other debris that are laying out there that, that can create a safety issue. And then the last photo is more of the rail cars. You have one of the old wooden cars that has collapsed. And then you have the open, you see the top right, the rail cars that are open. Again, uh, that creates a an attractive nuisance to, for people to, to go into and so forth. <laughs> That's one. All right. Uh, while you're here, the findings in the Liz pendants, are those still true and correct today? Correct. And is it your opinion that um, the condition of this property constitutes a, that is unsafe to the extent that it's a public nuisance and due to be demolished? Correct, I do. And does your report explain, uh, which has been offered into the record, explain how you would advise that demolition be accomplished? Yes, sir, it does. Um, did the city authorize um, any any debris storage on that that property no sir um, and um, has the city been con con uh, consulted regarding uh, any repairs that would be performed on that property no sir all right thank you nothing further at this time all right
uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Tisdale, do you have comments on this property? Which mayor are you talking about? Mayor, yeah, not you. You're not guilty this time. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> mayor Armstrong, look at that. There's views on the front page that this project has been abandoned to do some more work on around another building owner's property. This is the mayor who put the boot at the end of this. But anyway, that's where our money went for storm sewers. So we're sitting here with these three buildings. While we were doing demolition, I still mention this, that the city issued a fire permit, a burn permit to the contractor who burned down an 8,000 square foot building, the one that is the very fat building that you showed, they literally burned it to the ground. It was uninsured, the city gave the burn permit. Now, the city admitted this, they came in and took part of that building down. They took the fences down, my gates down, but the next layer, they took one of the walls down. They said the remaining walls were structurally sound. The other two buildings on the front, uh, we've talked about carrying them down ourselves for years. We've talked to them, we're trying to get a, an opinion out of the historical commission whether they are significant to the district or not. We understand they're not in the best condition. We're going to get on them ourselves. But as of this meeting, this has been expanded now to the two buildings on the end also which the walls are starting to sink. So we didn't have any idea you were talking about that. But I, th I think, you know, we agree that those buildings had a serious problem. We've tried to work with the city before on them. Uh, only now, you know, the city wants to act like I've done nothing for the last 35 years. It's the city that's done nothing for 35 years. We have a part of the developer. I'm going to mention this too. Offer $3.9 million for this entire property. The city, on three occasions since the last election, has made three different offers cash, trade, and swaps. And then finally, a few, I guess, the people in the media, the city has backed down and they moved their moving project to the Clark Theater. And that's, I want to point this out just so everybody in this room understands there's a heck of a lot more to this than John Hill sitting around here not spending money. I spent more money and have spent more money in this town than anybody in the history of this town. I don't just sold the one shopping center. I've got two more when I redo it. And I get very little cooperation out of this maker. Now, that's enough said. That's, that's where I stand. But I don't have any problem taking those buildings down. But I think the storm sewers is 35 years long enough for you to do your work too, maker. Thank you, sir. Is that, is that all? I, I, would, I would agree. I've asked for some time. You've already given them. <coughs> Uh, is that all? Uh, I'll ask the same question to Mr. Wiggins. Mr. Wiggins, uh, the condition of these buildings, in your opinion, does the storm sewers or lack of storm sewers or anything that, that Mr. Tisdall mentioned have anything to do with their present condition? No. All right. 
Okay, anybody from the public wish to make a comment? <clears throat> Mayor, I, may I, uh, if I may, may I address a, a question sure. to Mr. Tisdale, because I want, I want to clarify what he was, was offering. Okay. Um, for this particular property, are you saying that if you were given 120 days that you would be willing to demolish all of the buildings on, on this particular lot and to uh, remove any of the debris that's there and the vegetation? What, what I'm saying, I would like to 120 days confirm I'm working with the state right now. There is a certified historic tax credit relating to the buildings, and I think you should probably know about this, but it has to do with how many walls are standing and whether it's worth rebuilding and if it contributes to the National Register District. And I'm trying to get a determination from them right now. If it doesn't contribute, it can't be repaired, then I'm going to take it down and say it's worth Who are you working with, sir? I talked to Chloe Mercer as late as today. Do you, I mean, have you filed some sort of application? We, we talk, Mayor, I talk to this local commission all the time. No, sir, I'm asking a specific we question. Have an application to file because okay. it's not something. So you just, you've talked to some people at the Historic Commission? Yes. All right. So, so as, because that, that's, a, that's a little bit different than any any sort of deal I've ever ever been a part of on on a remediation, and I just it's important because it might change the recommendation if you were willing to commit to to the demolition within 120 days. But I understand from what you're saying you you can't do that based on where you are now. Again, I, I will do the demolition, but I would like to get the opinion from where I consider a much higher source that understands what this property may or may not. Mr. Tizzle, how long have you owned this property? Since Charles owned it in 1984, 85. So, I think it was 1985, I remember the city. 30 years? When the city issued the burn burden. That's what I'm complaining about. I've been complaining to the city for 35. You've owned the property for 30 years? That would be 35. Or 35. But you're just now striking up a conversation with the Historic Commission about it. No, no, we've talked to them about it before. I actually wrote the application to get the National Register District in anybody. I'm talking about these particular buildings that we're talking about right now. No, no. The, reason, the reason that entire district exists, it's, it's basically a warehouse of manufacturing and district. <clears throat> and building such as yours on the square, the very reason the square is not in the National Register District. It's been changed and they, they would not accept it. That's why this building may contribute materially to this district. Uh, I would I would be interested in this uh, uh, proposition with respect to, to these properties that we give that we move sus suspend the uh, uh, the public hearing portion of this until March one the same consideration that we gave to the first National Bank building. And that it, by March 1, if we don't, if he doesn't have something uh, positive or negative or whatever by March the 1st, that then we then we take this issue back up on March the 1st, just like we did the first National Bank building property. Now, I think that, help me think this through, we would go ahead and declare this a public nuisance but not take any recommendation on it until March. March the 1st. Is that the correct legal steps to take, sir? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm trying to give Mr. Tisdall the benefit, all benefits of the doubt here. Yes, sir. There's no question that those buildings, in my mind, constitute a public nuisance and ought to be, ought to be demolished. <clears throat> but He's telling us that he has a possibility of getting some funding for that. But he's had it for 35 years, he hadn't obtained that funding. I'm willing to give him until March the 1st to come up with a yes or no on the funding. Then we would take action on the recommendation, what action to take on it. Is that the correct step? 
Yes, sir. Um, and I, I'm, I, I guess I'm trying to kind of, I, I guess, respond on kind of to what everyone's saying here. Um, you, you know, you can also always, you, you can either can continue it like we did. Um, you can also order it for um, demolition, but administratively defer for 120 days. And if a plan is presented either where he wants to demolish it himself or if there's something that he can present to the council and convince you that there's that's, an opportunity there for repair, you can always that's, uh, back off that decision. Yeah, that's, that's four months. Uh, I think that's too long. Uh, I, I think he was, will know something one way or the other by March the 1st. Oh, and, and I wasn't suggesting that that, that that conversation be put off that long. Just and I, it, I, yeah. Yes, sir. The recommendation that stands before us right now is to declare it a public nuisance and order, it, order demolition. What I'm saying is, is that we will uh, adopt the order uh, uh, declaring it a public nuisance, but not order the demolition until March the 1st. It gives him time to get back to us on. Maybe he didn't bring us back something. Mr. Mayor, if we take the recommendation uh, that the appropriate <coughs> officials the mic, have, have done, uh, it's 14 days till the next mm -hmm. council meeting, and this doesn't require that anything have to be begun uh, for 20 days. That's right. So if, if we did that, that would do basically what you were talking about. Okay, you're, you're exactly he'd, right. He'd still have 20 days, even though the council meeting is 14 days from today. I think the recommendation is that the list pendants is correct and that the property should be ordered, uh, uh, declared a public nuisance and ordered demi uh, demolished with this additional statement that, the, that Mr. Tizzle has 20 days after this, is ta this action is taken to get back with you on some resolution of this. Now that, that's correct, is it not? Yes, sir. He doesn't uh, have to do anything for 20 days. Under our ordinance, the city will take no steps towards demolition for 20 days. All right. Okay, y'all heard what the recommendation is, and I think we all understand he's, he, he'll have 20 additional days uh, to uh, secure whatever help he needs or get back with the city and work out some agreement it could be brought right. back to us later now does this cover all four buildings or just that, one, that one just that one building just been yeah. talking about okay. yeah. it'll it will it'll, it'll happen automatically if he doesn't if, if mr tisdall between now and 20 days from now doesn't bring back something that satisfies our uh, uh, public official uh, municipal official then the order will be will be uh, final unless unless he appeals it to the circuit court. But that's that's another issue altogether. So uh, this this applies to the whole this whole number two fifty four historic Crescent Street, does it not? So that is the recommendation and the debris plus the debris out there. I I, I would say this about the debris. There ain't no historical commission going to give you authority to leave that debris out there. Uh, so I don't know why that couldn't be picked up pretty quickly. Uh, but, but out of an abundance of trying to be fair about this, uh, we, we're not going to take any action on this for 20 days. All right. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, the motion is, is to declare the list pending correct to order the property uh, 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 or to hold the property as a public nuisance and that it be demolished. All in, uh, any, any further discussion? You know, uh, Mr. Tizzle, you've had a certain number of days, same as the other people, to come to the city and try to work out a plan. What, are you gonna do that now or are you just gonna let it drag on?
Well, I'm not going to let you get by with that statement without this comment. The reason you have to speak to the city attorney is because you threaten to sue every one of us. And when people get threat when people are threatened to be sued, they usually defer it to their city attorney. That's why we've done that. That's All right. Issue. I have not threatened to sue anyone other than the fact that you won't fix your repairs and frustrate the customer. Another subject I know. That's no excuse to ignore my Call for question. Call for question. All in favor say I or, or indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Same sign. Thank you. Okay, we will now move to uh, lot on South Cotton Street. That's the only address I've got for that. Uh, is there anyone here who has an ownership interest in this lot on South Cotton Street? All right. Let, okay, let the record show Mr. Tesla owns that as well. All right. Okay, Mr. Goldman. All right. Um, for this property, which um, again um, is a lot that runs alongside the, the depot building and behind, um, well, alongside the alongside there, and it's shown on the map in front of you. Um, this one also, as you heard described in the last one, contains building debris um, and some of the train car structures. Um, and you have before you the, the package which contains the Liz pendants, the affidavit of publication, a number of pictures. You've been given the report of the building official with his recommendation and also um, uh, the email from Mr. Tisdale, the photographs from Mr. Tisdale, and the letters relative to this property. And so, with that being said, I'll call on Mr. Wiggins to come up and to take us through a couple of things. Mr. Wiggins, before you start, I, on my handout, I did not have an address, but you're showing this as 233 South Cotton Street. Is that the correct it's address? the lot adjacent to 233. Uh, E911 will not give us an address for a vacant lot, so it's the lot, it's the lot adjacent okay. to 233 South Cotton. All right. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and the part the parcel ID is in the Liz pendants that which describes the property, also. Okay. So as well as the legal description. You're right. Uh, as you can see, this basically this this piece of property uh, is more or less debris um, that joins the rest of it along with the rail cars and other uh, other numerous types of debris on the lot. Um, as you see on the top right, some more of the, the debris that was stockpiled. Again, on the left, the rail cars that are overgrown, along with a lot of other, uh, a lot of other type equipment. There again, there's an, an, on the bottom right, you can see another train car that's, uh, as we consider to be the attractive nuisance. Um, again, you know, other various equipment, rail cars, things overgrown. Mr. Uh, Mr. Wiggins, you, we've used, thrown the word attractive nuisance around here pretty liberally tonight. Uh, some of us know what that means under the law and some of us may not. Would you describe to us or let I Mr. will. Let, I'll let, let uh, Mr. Goldman, Mr. He, Goldman uh, give us the definition of attractive nuisance. Um, an attractive nuisance is a condition that would, would be likely to invite um, trespassers, children, people who might take an interest in something, particularly on the, on the property. Um, this is why, for example, uh, to give a different example of an attractive nuisance, if you have a swimming pool, you're required to put up a fence around it because it's considered to be an attractive nuisance and you're really on notice that people may come and take an interest in it. Um, again, as Mr. Wiggins mentioned in the previous um, hearing, but also applicable to this one, there are internet sites out there devoted to bringing people to the site. Um, 
and there are also on, on the structures along here evidence of graffiti and evidence of, of traffic. Um, there's a fence along the front, but it is accessible um, to people who want to enter it. And uh, therefore, if they were to go onto the property, would be exposed to the particular physical dangers of it. Again, you don't have to be on the property in order to render it unsafe uh, to the extent that it's a public nuisance. Um, we believe that this also is one of the properties that's contributing to a blighting effect in the area. And um, the weeds, um, which have been allowed to grow at times, and in, in the particular debris that makes it a bit more difficult to control the weeds, um, the shelter that the debris provides for rats and snakes and uh, mice and vermin and mosquitoes um, all provide, um, contribute to, to, to nuisance conditions. Um, but but those, those are external to the property. The attractive nuisance are those conditions on the property that would draw um, trespassers and children to it. Thank you, sir. But with that said, uh, you can see the condition that the property's in, along with the debris and the other, the other accumulation of, of debris and scrap and rail cars and so forth. It's our recommendation that it be de it, it be declared a nuisance and abated. And the recommendation is 45 days from the day that all items are to be removed. And if any rail cars are to remain on the property, they'd be to repaired and made into a safe, secure condition and not to be an attractive nuisance. Okay, uh, Mr. Tisdall. Uh, Anything further, sir? All right, the, the recommendation uh, is that the list matters in the list pendings that is filed with this, this piece of property are, is correct. Uh, the recommendation is that this uh, constitutes a safety hazard uh, and that it be declared a public nuisance, that the property be cleaned, uh, that the train cars be uh, made secure and safe and uh, that this be done within 45 days. Is that, did I restate it correctly? All right. We'll declare the public uh, hearing portion of this closed and go to the council. Do we have a motion to, a rec to adopt the recommendation? Mr. Mayor, would you repeat the motion? The motion would be to uh, find that the list pending, the matters contained in the list pendings are correct as described by Mr. Wiggins and the NI materials, uh, that the uh, declare that the area is just described to you and as you've seen the photographs uh, uh, or declare uh, or a public uh, safety hazard, to declare it a nuisance and that it be ordered, that the property be ordered to be cleared and cleaned of any debris that the train cars be made secure and safe, and that that work be done and completed within 45 days. Mayor, motion is before, I, I'm sorry, before that motion's made, um, just to clarify, would you mind calling to see if there are any other public comments? I'm sorry, I, I, I overlooked that completely. Anybody else in, out here will make a comment about this particular piece of property? Mr. Mayor, my name is Walter Boyd, I'm 
and Bush. I'm just uh, curious about the track and nuisance uh, thing because when you throw that term out, you really can be very vague about it. And I wonder if I could get a clarification for education purposes. Is a track and nuisance mentioned in the ordinance, or do you just come under the that the track and nuisance is unsafe? Because when you throw these characters, everything I've, can be an attractive nuisance. I'm well, we're gonna take we're gonna take you up later, okay? <laughs> uh, no, no. The, the, the attractive nuisance as a matter of law is a is a safety hazard, okay? As a matter of definition and law, an attractive nuisance is a dangerous matter that needs to be made safe. That's what we're referring to these as attractive nuisance areas where children may get in and get injured and. Uh, Little, little children are, are attracted to swimming pools, trains, uh, wrecked cars, and all that kind of stuff. You've got to make them uh, safe uh, so that uh, they can't get hurt. Well, I understand that. I don't know what it is in the law. I'm just asking, is the track of mentioned in the article? I, th I think it is, yes. Is there, there are 11 fairly specific findings that the appropriate municipal official made in, in addition to sort of the, the general findings for his conclusions. One of those, and we haven't gone through them all, uh, they're, they're, they're in the evidence before the council, but let me read this one. And it says, the building is neglected, damaged, dilapidated, unsecured, or abandoned so as to become an attractive nuisance to children who might play, enter on the building structure, part of building or structure, party wall or foundation to their danger has become a harbor for vagrants, criminals, or immoral persons, or enables persons to resort to the building, structure, part of building or structure, party wall, or foundation for committing a nuisance or an unlawful act. Okay. I, I think I Thank you. All right, anybody else? Okay, we'll close the public uh, comment portion. Uh, do you want me to restate the motion? No, I just, I no, sir, I accept this. All right, do I'll we have someone motion. to make that motion? I'll make the motion. All right, Mr. Wells makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Powell makes a second. Are any, anything further between the council about this parcel? All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. And the motion carries. Our last uh, piece of property is 233 South Cotton Street. Uh, is the owner of that property present? Mr. Tisdall acknowledged that he owns that property as well. All right, uh, Mr. Goldman. All right, thank you. Again, on this property you have before yeah, you. Yeah, I guess this is a public comments portion. Yes, public sir. Public meeting portion of it, so I will make that clear. All right, go ahead. Again, on this property you have before you the packet that contains the Liz Pendens, the affidavit of publication, the pictures, the affidavit or the Liz pendants contains the findings of the appropriate municipal official. You also have a written recommendation from the appropriate municipal official. Um, and we also, again, on behalf of the uh, uh, or for this property um, at 233 South Cotton Street, which is generally referred to as the train depot building, um, would offer in as objections for Mr. Tisdale his email the photographs that were attached to it and um, any letters that he submitted concerning this property. Um, all right, this pro portion of the property uh, you'll see highlighted um, on the aerial map and you'll see that um, this, this is largely cons consumed by the train depot building itself with a little bit of surrounding property. And with that as an introduction to where we are, I will call on Mr. Wiggins to come up and take us through a few of the photos. If you look at the top right of your screen there, uh, you can see the condition of this building. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, a lot of it is gone. If you look on the left, you see the top part of the building is exposed, which allows um, easy access for birds and other varmints. Uh, but you can also see the condition of the building, the siding falling off, so forth. Uh, 
again, apologize for the darkness of the pictures. You see the backside of that building uh, there is the wooden structure part. Then if you look to your right on the top, there's uh, building material debris uh, stored all around the brick portion of the building. Uh, there you can see the graffiti, which goes back to the attractive nuisance that we've been talking about um, on the brick portion of the building. Uh, again, you see that the roof, the building does not have a, a proper roof coating on it. Uh, you can see uh, on the top right, you start seeing the deterioration of uh, some of the wood around the fascia and the soffit of the building. So um, it's our recommendation that uh, the wooden structure in the back of the old depot there be demolished um, within 30 days, 45 days uh, from the day the building material, the debris and the weeds and other similar items be removed out from around the, the brick structure. Uh, 50 days, the graffiti be removed and 75 days from the day that a roof and of the brick building be repaired to be weather tight uh, to keep further deterioration of the building. All right, uh, Mr. Tissell. Earlier, 
on the on the right there. Where where is that where is that building? Is that the freight? Yes, sir. That's the freight portion building. Of the building. That's the one Mr. Tisdall says is what it, what, completely Tisdall, rebuilt. What, what about that photograph misrepresents the truth? The truth is that everything in the structure has been rebuilt a component at a time. The roof structure. What you're looking at there that looks so bad is the siding which we intentionally left on it until we replace it. This would be the west, excuse me, the east end and the south side siding. The north side siding is in fairly good condition. That's this other photograph. What, what, let me ask you this. What, what is holding up you completing this work? We just haven't done it. We can get back on it. We can certainly do it. Mayor, you understand this now. I work on free shopping stuff. I'm asking about this. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm asking about this building right here. This, this is the building that's before us, and, and you're saying that you're working to do How long have you owned this building? I've owned it a while, but that's not the point. Yes, sir. It's exactly the point. It's exactly the point. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm, I, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not. I'm not trying to set your agenda. But we've got a building here that appears to be uh, a nuisance to me, a public nuisance. I don't want to see it torn down either. But I'd like to see it repaired and fixed. Uh, That's the whole problem, Mayor. All of the nuisances you're addressing happen on me. You're no, sir. everybody else. No, sir. I'm, no, that's not true. Yeah, no, I'm not, we're going to get to your relationship. <laughs> uh, if you've got any other comments relative to this or any, any solution that you'd like to offer, we'd like to hear it now. Otherwise, we're going to take action on it. Well, you go ahead and tell this to now. I swear there will be thanks instead of that. <clears throat> yeah. All right. What's your recommendation, sir? Recommend. Oh, excuse me. Is there anybody else in the out here want to make a comment about this. Uh, I want just, if I could, just, Mr. Goldman, you've done a very good job. And, uh, but I do think, when you throw this, I don't want to nitpick too much, but uh, when Mr. Wiggins saw that uh, tractor nuisance thing, I think you've got to tie it into one of the provisions in order. So when you throw that in, I think you should mention the specific provision. You've got nine out of that. And I wasn't clear what, what the track this. I've been through a little bit of this, and you get everybody all excited about calling it a track of nuisance and nuisance and thinking about kids and all of this sort of thing. So I, that's just a nitpicking point. But if you don't you mind, I'm sorry to nitpicker. And I thank you very much in your election. I, well, I'll comment on that one. Well, that's, that's not the issue here tonight. The, 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 pe the people will take care of that one way or the other. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Can I make a comment? Sure. About the building being destructed, it said that that is recommended because the expense would be more than the 50% of the value of the structure. But if the property owner chooses to repair it, as long as they provide us an acceptable plan to do that we're not saying you have to tear it down but if you don't tear it down you just simply have to make the repairs in a reasonable time if if they're give if we're given a plan that says this is what I'll do and this is the time frame that is reasonable to do it and we determine that's reasonable that's acceptable there's nothing that says that it has to be torn down, as I read the, the recommendation here. That's, is that not right? That, that is correct, but we've had no such. Well, I, I understand. Uh, we've but, had no saying, such proposal. They Mr. Got, they got Mr. Tesla says that we're we're not to set his agenda, and we're not we're not so what we're trying to do. We, we've got to address these issues in our city, and we're happy to work. I think we've demonstrated. Over and over again, we're happy to work with anybody as long as they'll work with us. The floor is open. I'm, I'm, I'm all ears uh, to hear a, a proposal to address this building right here that's so important and so uh, historic. Uh, what Mr. Tisdall, who is the owner and has owned it for how many years, Mr. Tisdall? I'd like to know something about what's going on. I'll give you a quote. We'll change the side of that. That's all that's wrong with the building. We'll put things free from I don't know that I can just jump on every one of these five all at one time. Well, we, we
we've got to have some. I'll give you a schedule. I'll give you a written schedule. I mean, you haven't even painted your file with all your windows in the last 30 years. It's still the same. Well, that's, now, that's. But you want to set me. That's. You want to set me up to have to do all of this in 30 days. And you know it can't be done. I'm, I'm not trying to you set you up to do anything. I'm not going to argue with you about this, Mr. Tilsdale. Now, we're here, to, we're here to try to enforce this ordinance in a fair handed way. It, it would help if you would be a little forthcoming and work with us here. And I think you're hearing that from me and the council over and over and over again. But I hear nothing from you except I might can do it, I don't know when, this, that, and the other. If you, if you, will, make, if you will make us a proposal that's reasonable, we'll be happy to accept that, but you've got to follow up on it. Tell me what your proposal is. Tell me what. Are y'all ready to take action on this recommendation? Yes. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. How about tonight? Tell us tonight how long it will take you. I can do the signing on it probably within 120 days. I can't do it tomorrow. What are the other what are the other issues other than the siding? The roof. The roof and the debris, the graffiti. Can you handle these issues as this detail? Do you have a copy of what the issues are? Can you handle those details in 120 days? I think I can. I'm asking you to ask the police department to arrest the fellow who keeps breaking into the building like the graffiti. Well, they know who he is. Pardon me? They know who he is. Well, they, know who he is. I, they, they ought to arrest him then. Uh, we would also recommend that a proper fence be put around after the work is completed, put around to eliminate the nuisance. The recommendation is to allow you 120 days to achieve the matter set out in this finding. We, we, we are going to declare it a public nuisance. But we're going to allow you 120 days to, to cure that nuisance. And the nuisance will be taking care of the items that are in the finding. Now you will be rebuilding the building, not destroying it, the, the wooden structure. Right. It's, it's 90% rebuilt now. It doesn't okay. feel that way in the public. Sure. Very, very misleading. Well, let, let's get off of the, yeah. we're trying to work with you here, John, if you just work with us a little bit, okay? The, 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 the action that I'm that I hear being recommended is that this property be found to be a public constitute a public nuisance, but that you'll be allowed 120 days to uh, re what's the correct word, Mr. Lawyer? I'm trying to come up with to address this nuisance to to, to abate it. You, 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 that you be given 120 days to abate the nuisance that is set out in the findings of the public official, the mm -hmm. municipal official. And if not, we will take steps. And if, yeah, if, 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 it's not, if it's not abated within that 120 days or unless you get an extension from us in some way for very good reason, then the action will be followed up on by, by the city pursuant to the ordinance. I don't know how much fairer we can be than that. All right, he agrees with that. That's on the record. Everybody in this room hear that? Can, can we do with this one what we did with the bank building and, and John gets a signed agreement with us yes, at sir. the next council meeting for the 120 days? And yes, sir. It's a document. That yeah, I'm, we, we, I'm we can prepare it as, I have a as long as you, know, you sign and we sign. That's like the bank building, the, the same deal. <clears throat> okay, the, 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 the motion would be to declare this property a public nuisance. Would, would, wouldn't it be, Mayor, based on what I just said, that I'm, we would we, we'll, 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 we'll get to that, but I got, you first got to declare it a public nuisance. Yes. Then he, he has to come to us with an agreement before the next council meeting. As stated. That, that sets out that he is going to address 
these issues that are set out in this finding here within 120 days from the date or the date that we get the agreement. Okay, well, I, I thought we tabled the bank building. Well, the, no. the bank building was because they had come in and worked out, pretty much worked out an agreement with us beforehand. Mr. Tizzle hadn't done that. Well, but I'm just going by based on, he said he would agree with 120 days. How many times and is he? He's got well, to. If he doesn't, then at the next meeting. We've got to start all over. 14 days is off that. We've got to start all over with the, with the abatement process. If, if we don't make a finding tonight, I think we've got to start all over again. So if we don't have an agreement with the bank building, we've got to start all over? I, Terry, that's different. No, no I, I'm, I'm yeah. just saying that I think based on what we did there, we don't have to do the same this man we dealt with. Let's see. Uh, Listen, the, I understand uh, the reputation that he has, but I am trying as best I can I know. to we, be fair. We all are. We, we are. Yeah. We all are. And, and we did fair. that for them. We don't even know the guy in California. So, like it or not, I want to make all sure right, we here, do here, the same here, thing. Here's what you're saying. Here's what you're saying. And this is what we did for the bank building, and, and I don't really have a problem with this that we continue this public hearing, right. this public hearing, until March the 1st. And if we don't have a written agreement that sets out the terms that I just got through saying, mm -hmm. that it, it, this work will be completed within 120 days from the date of the agreement, and that the agreement will provide that all the matters that are addressed in the findings of the appropriate municipal official, and you've got a package in your hand right here, Mr. Tisdall. It sets out what, the, what those deficiencies are that causes this to be a public nuisance. If we don't have that by March the 1st, then we would declare it a public nuisance and move forward. Mr. That, Mayor? That, that's what, I, Mr. That's Mayor, what with, I was looking for. With, with the bank building, Mr. Plummer, on behalf of the owner, agreed to that continuance, so I'd I would recommend that Mr. Tisdale agree Mr. To that so that we don't have to right, re-notice. You need to agree that we continue this public hearing to March the 1st to accomplish what we just said we wanted to accomplish. Okay. You, you, you let the record show he agrees with that. All right, then we'll need a motion to continue this, this matter, the public hearing portion of this matter, to mar March the 1st pending receiving a written agreement that we've just talked about. Can I have and a motion to that effect? I, I will make that motion. All right. Do we have a second? Second. second. We've got two seconds. I will go ahead and take one. Will, she said you could second. All right. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion between the members of the council? Now, this is just on this piece of property. This is this only on the, on the train depot and the... And the uh, the uh, 233 South Cotton Street. Street. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of adopting motion, please indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Thank you. All right, there are no other business to come before the council. We do want to uh, announce that we have one housing authority opening. Anyone interested in serving on the housing authority should uh, let us know. Uh, the lawyer. The lawyer. I'm sorry. Uh, you have any? Were you? Ken. Me? Mr. Goldman, did you have anything else you wanted to? No, sir. To? That's, that's, that, that's everything. Okay. Thank you all very much. Okay. All right. We will stand adjourned.